I feel so violated. You never it's know just, when you might be stealing a catalytic converter from somebody that's trying to buy their first house. I know. And trying to adopt and foster kids. I mean, come on. I know. <laughs> Good morning. So it's a day before Thanksgiving. We woke up, came out, loaded up the car to go to see family. And a 10 hour drive. So we're like, all right, let's get an early start so we can get there by dinner. And I started up the car and it was really loud. Like somebody po poked a hole in the muffler and I looked underneath to see if I could see anything. And sure enough, somebody sawed off our catalytic converter. I wasn't sure what it was at first, but I could tell that they had sawed off a chunk from the exhaust system and I you can see the metal dust on the ground still called the police and the police are on their way to come file a report but yeah the question is do we even bother replacing it yet or do we wait until we move into a house where we have a garage and don't have to worry about somebody sawing us off again, again. we're also coming up on Black Friday so if somebody wants a new TV or anything and they want to go get you know a catalytic converter and try to sell it and make some money to go buy something that could be part of it too because I mean the timing is a little odd I mean yeah. it could be a coincidence that somebody We've... just happens to need a repair right now and yeah. they need the part but another strong possibility is that they want the money because we've been here um for let's see a month and a half and you know this car's been here most days we don't really need to go anywhere but today <laughs> we needed to go all the way to Maryland but this is not okay it's not okay to steal people's catalytic converters no like if you need money, ask for money to get it, but don't just saw off someone else's. Uh, I've never had to make an insurance claim before. Yeah, so I don't know first. how it's going to affect insurance. And we just switched from Colorado to Indiana, so I don't know if that affects anything. So we're going to wait before filing a claim to talk to our insurance agents, see what they say. Plus, we're and, about to buy a house, so mm -hmm. I mean, then we're going to get new insurance for the house and for the car. So yeah, I don't know if it's worth it or not, if it's going to affect it. So we got to find out from our oh. agents. <laughs> Oh, here's the officer. Yeah. yeah. So if you look underneath here, you can see the dust still from the metal where they sawed it. Yeah. You can see the section of pipe that's missing here where the catalytic converter probably was. So it happened like sometime during the night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I drove it last night, yesterday evening. Okay. Let me run your plate real quick, see if it comes back and then. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll get your, uh, registration. Sure. I had to come back in the car because man it's pretty windy out there and that's the other thing is like it was pouring rain last night like not all the time like it was on and off i'm trying to keep a positive attitude about it you know maybe it's one of those things where you just needed to get on the road a little bit later so you wouldn't have an accident something like that you know or just or it just happened you know um but yeah trying to be thankful because it is thanksgiving time <laughs> <laughs> and we're not injured, we're not hurt, it's just inconvenient and rude. Yeah, just, just rude. Yeah, so everything's, you know, packed up in the car. Oh, you can't see it. Alright, that didn't take very long. Nope. It's good. Alright. Peter asked him when he got here, does this thing happen often? He said, not really. He's like, no, but he's like, property crimes happen anywhere and everywhere. And yeah. Like, sometimes it happens more often in a good neighborhood, too. And then as far as the police department side, he's like, yeah, you know, this is one of those things we'll report. You know, a detective will look at it. But at the end of the day, they're going to be like, there's not much we can do. I posted this on Facebook, and I had a friend reach out to me and said, I'm so sorry. You feel violated. I was like, I do. But the one good thing about this, Peter, is now we are alert like i was afraid like you know maybe we'd be tired today nope not tired anymore in fact you're too loud i'm too loud people are still sleeping yeah but yeah we'll be alert today because <laughs> our blood is going <laughs> it's all good it's all good <laughs> what is that face for it's 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 not okay though like don't it's not okay that somebody cut it off. Like, no, cool. that is not okay. I'm just trying to have a positive attitude. I understand that I was too, fitness. but like you're taking it a little too far, I think. Okay. It's not okay. I'm okay. The car's not okay. And what happened to the car is not okay. <laughs> and if none of this makes sense, so sorry. I haven't really gone to sleep since 4.15 when I woke up to go to the bathroom and I didn't really go back to sleep. So, yep. <laughs> Didn't get much sleep. Since our car is over 15 years old, 
we had just talked about, all right, should we drop our comprehensive insurance on the car? But since this is our only vehicle right now, and since we are just about to move into a house with a garage, so this stuff wouldn't happen anymore, um, we were like, no, I think we should keep it until we move into our house. And good thing we did. If I do end up doing the claim after, like, we just pay out of the pocket for the rental car, what does that process look like as far as getting reimbursed for at least part of it? Day form is open until 9, and that's the thing. And see, I don't oh. necessarily want to act on starting a claim if it's going to negatively affect everything. Right, and we don't want to, yeah. So oh. I'm going to call the mechanic first to see what we're looking at as far as cost to repair the thing, yeah. to replace it. Anyway, we need to see where they cut it, see if it's before or after the old 2 sensor, and then price it that way. Okay, and what, just do you like, have insurance? we do, yeah, what's like a rough estimate, ballpark, of what it would normally be for something like that? I have to like see that? what it needs first. I mean, if it was both I mean, of those. We, we do converters anywhere from $1,200 down to $300. Gotcha. <laughs> it's just such a broad range, we have to see what it needs. All right, so he doesn't know what the issue is, so he doesn't know what to quote us. Um, so we could bring it in, so he could at least order the parts, have it from her back, but I think that's gonna be too long. I say we just get a rental car, get deal on the road. The we have a car here. I don't know, deal with it later. Okay. All right, so now currently looking at rental cars. We're closer to Avon, and so I'm debating between going with Avon or you guys. You guys are a little bit cheaper, so it just kind of depends if you guys are able to pick us up or not before I book it. Yeah, I mean, if, oh, if I can't no guarantee car. a pickup time, then there's no point. I mean, we're just trying to get out of here. We were trying to get on the road at 6, but got up and started the car up and found out somebody cut off the catalytic converter, so now we're figuring out other options. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I know yeah. it's last minute, you know, a lot of reservations because people are going out for tomorrow. Gotcha. So if we call the reservations number, are they able to see, based on those reservations, like where we can get a car right away? This is terrible. Of course it had to happen on the day when everyone else needs to rent a car too. If this happened any other day, it'd be fine because, no, now they're all booked until 2 o'clock. Supposedly. It's, it's not even 8 right now. We wanted to be on the road by 6. <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping a positive attitude. I end up going to the mechanic after all. Yeah. So just call and talk to each of the locations and see if yeah, we can get one right away. I'm getting upset and hungry. I need to eat food. I'm gonna eat some cookies. It's oatmeal. It's breakfast food. And somebody cut out the catalytic converter, so yeah. All right, yeah, we can bring it down. Um, do you have any idea like when you think you'd probably be able to get to it just, today? Just bring it. Well, he's finishing up one this, uh, job this morning, so I'd say probably about 10 o'clock, so hopefully I can get it in. Okay, cool. All right, we'll be right down. Thank you. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, sweet. That is a mechanic that we have already found, but they so didn't open until 8, so that's why we didn't call them first. He's TechNet certified, which is what our mechanic back Colorado Springs, Mike's Japanese, is yeah. TechNet certified. That's the nationwide warranty, so when you get something repaired, I don't know if it covers, like, if somebody cuts out another catalytic converter after we get it replaced, if that would be covered, but, hey, might as well stick with the guys that are good. <laughs> yeah, so with TechNet, it means that they're a good enough mechanic that, um that then um, if a part needs to be replaced, TechNet, the, this company replaces the part. Okay, listen. Yeah, we definitely can't drive 10 hours with a sound like this. We could, but we're gonna be those obnoxious people. And it's pollution like crazy, and apparently, and possibly seeping up. Our car 
car, Dad? Yeah. It's pretty loud. So we're going to a mechanic. They're gonna check it out. They might be able to get it swapped out by 10. We'll see. So our insurance will cover this, but we're gonna wait to file a claim until we find out from our insurance agent if it's gonna jack up our rates a lot. Because we're about to switch. So. My goodness. Yeah, so you know, we'll see what happens. This sounds really bad. Yeah, I'm not gonna go very fast. Alright, I'll talk to you later. I'll have to I can't hear much right now, but <laughs> Thankful we found this guy last week. We came here last so week, busy. so that way we could make sure our car was, you know, safe to drive all the way out to the East Coast, and yep, it, it was then. <laughs> We're on the road. Yay, we get to see family for Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're gonna get there, ETA is eight o'clock. Four hours later than we were planning on leaving, we're on our way. That's a lot faster than I thought when we realized the situation this morning. Um, Notice right. how quiet it is now. So Peter just rented a car last week and he was saying when he got back to this car how loud it was. And now it's all relative because now you're saying how quiet it is. <laughs> so it ended up being $450, which is not money we really wanted to spend right now. No one ever wants to spend extra money on things that they shouldn't have to spend money on. So that is just so inconvenient because someone that sells it, they can probably get $50 for it. But this morning we had to have the hassle of calling the police, calling the insurance, trying to figure out if, if renting a car was best or trying to get in the mechanic. So our mechanic let us know that catalytic converters have been stolen pretty frequently. Um, it's kind of been a rising crime and uh, he said that there was even someone that he knew of that during their lunch break when they were parked at a restaurant, someone came and stole their car like converter. So apparently it only takes them like five to 10 minutes. They just hop underneath, cut, cut, and then boom, they take that pipe and then they're able to um, sell the metal, the pla um, I don't know what kind of metal it is, but platinum, plat I think was what it was. Anyway, they're able to sell that metal for like, 50 to maybe up to $250 if they can sell that part. Why are catalytic converters stolen? And so here's, you know, an article and it's actually written in 2012. So apparently this has been a thing that's happened for a while now. So our mechanic was just telling us that there was a work truck um, and so they had their catalytic converter stolen. It ended up costing him $6,000 to get it replaced. So, that's just so crazy. It was nice that the mechanic had Wi-Fi, so we were both able to get some work done. Slash Black Friday shopping. Budget got cut a little bit now, because we weren't planning on this. You never it's know just... when you might be stealing a catalytic converter from somebody that's trying to buy their first house. I know. And trying to adopt and foster kids. I mean, come on. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's just really inconvenient time. I mean, yeah. We were wondering, can we even afford to like, you know, drive all the way out there or calculating the gas to get all the way out to family and back? And we're like, okay, yeah, we can do it. And, and then this happened, so. 
Now, I do want to put things in perspective a little bit. Like, I don't want to be too much the poor me, poor me, woe is me. Right. Like, we are still incredibly blessed. Yes. I mean, we live in the United States, land of opportunity. You know, there's there's so much to be thankful for. We are so spoiled. Yeah. You know, we could be in a place where we're scared for our life a lot more often. We're not even scared for our life. I mean, we just had something stolen from us. Right. Which is inconvenience and annoying. Yes. Um, and it shouldn't happen. But at the end of the day, just to put things in perspective. Yeah. There's a lot to be thankful for. Hey, it's appropriate because it's Thanksgiving time. Yay! <laughs> this morning's adventure you never know what happy hoppy adventures you're gonna have so make sure to subscribe if you are not already and we'll see you in the next adventure thanks guys bye all right so since our car is a 2003 so this is so old it has nothing to do with yeah. 2003 yeah <laughs> yeah i don't think necessarily anybody targeted us i think they were just like oh that's the car or that's the car that's easy to get underneath and mm -hmm. that's a car maybe that has the part that i need and so yeah. that's what i'm taking yeah i know um, Peter called on the non-emergency Indianapolis number, so an officer should be sh showing up sh shortly. Oh goodness, I'm still waking up. Thankfully, we're on the road, because we had everything packed up, so we're like, oh goodness, we're gonna have to, don't hit the car, oh. Um, so to help us get some of our money recouped, make sure to subscribe if you are not already, <laughs> and watch our videos so we can start making up some ad revenue. But yeah, I tell you what, we're not expecting this. Yeah, I got you, honey, and you got me.